here. We will be taking your calls for the next hour at 1-877-NEWSMAX. Again, that's 1-877-639-7629. You can call in with a short question or comment, and we will put you on the air live. Again, that number is one 877 Newsmax. And for much more on this story, we are now joined from Newsmax Washington, the former director of both the NSA and the CIA, General Michael Hayden, the general now principal at the Chertoff Group and author of the book Playing to the Edge, American Intelligence in the Age of Terror. General, thank you for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. General, you have... You have said time and time again that Donald Trump's policies are ones that are troubling to you, but we just heard Trump and Clinton on their stances on how to deal with terrorism. Which one of those two, in your mind, has given you the confidence they are ready to lead this country? Well, I've, I've got equal opportunity discomfort, Miranda. Uh, on the one side, on the Democrat side, you know, we really do need to talk about the civil war that is going on within Islam, and, and we can't ignore it. In fact, until Islam makes peace with itself, we're going to see these kinds of things in the United States and globally. On the other side, however, uh, I complain about Mr. Trump's position that we should close our borders to all the adherents to one of the world's great religions. I have actually said that what he said yesterday and this morning uh, about uh, Orlando was was prejudiced, simplistic, and frankly, just wrong. And so I've got I've got issues across the spectrum today. Are you saying that it's irresponsible? Well, look, the the basic narrative of ISIS, what they use to recruit, the core, the core of their belief system is undying enmity between what they think is Islam and all of us here in the West. That's not true. But Mr. Trump continually suggests that it is true, that they all hate us, and that none of them should be allowed to be in the country. I think that reinforces their worldview, not our worldview. FBI Director James Comey spoke earlier today. He outlined what he and the FBI know so far in this investigation. Take a listen to what he had to say. So far, we see no indication that this was a plot directed from outside the United States. And we see no indication that he was part of any kind of network. During the calls, he said he was doing this for the leader of ISIL, who he named and pledged loyalty to. But he also appeared to claim solidarity with the perpetrators of the Boston Marathon bombing and solidarity with a Florida man who died as a suicide bomber in Syria for al-Nusra Front, a group in conflict with the so-called Islamic State. General ISIS has claimed responsibility for this attack. Is the FBI wrong or was ISIS just grasping at an opportunity to take credit for what has been described as a lone wolf attack? Yeah, I, I, I think you've actually answered the question, Miranda. I think ISIS wants to claim credit for it. I, I don't think they can claim responsibility. I think the individual acted on his own. And, and frankly, Miranda, that's the worst of all possible worlds for someone like me. Look, we stop terrorist attacks because we see the connective tissue between different people and elements planning the attack. When this is all self-contained within one human being, there's no trail for us to detect. And that's what makes this so troubling. What also makes this troubling to many people, uh, Director Comey also confirmed that the shooter was radicalized, but added that the FBI found no evidence of radicalization when its agents investigated him, which we're told happened multiple times. How can law enforcement or Homeland Security officials prevent people like this lone wolf attacker to keep from falling through the cracks? Miranda, that's a great question. And, and frankly, it's worse than you've suggested. On three occasions now, we've had someone on the radar whom we looked at and dismissed who have gone on to create terrorist acts. Uh, Major Hassan at, at Fort Hood, Tsarnaev, as you mentioned, in Boston, and now what happened in Orlando over the weekend. I think the Bureau is going to have to re-examine its tactics, techniques, and procedures, but, but Miranda, it's also possible that the director is absolutely correct, that when the Bureau looked at these people, they were not in the place that they finally ended up in. And that's what makes this, one, so frightening, and two, very difficult. 
Well, earlier today, the Saudi Interior Ministry confirmed that the shooter had traveled to Saudi Arabia twice, once in 2011 and another time in 2012. Saudi officials say it was for an Islamic pilgrimage. But shouldn't that have raised red flags to U.S. counterterrorism authorities, in your opinion? Yeah, well, actually, in the, in, in the case of this individual, about whom they had other suspicions, perhaps it should have, Miranda. But, you know, a Muslim going to Saudi Arabia for religious purposes is kind of a universal condition within the, re within the religion. So we couldn't take that, shouldn't take that as a sole indicator of radicalism. But perhaps in this case, we could have added it to the mix. You know, you, you mentioned that we need to reevaluate the situation just based on the information that you know. Is there anything that you think the FBI could have done differently to prevent this attack? I don't know enough to, to say that, Miranda. Uh, they did investigate him. They did look into it. I can only assume that the agents, being very sensitive to, to these kinds of threats, did their job thoroughly. But let's let the facts take us where they will. Let's see as this evolves what it was we knew and when we knew it. And perhaps there were errors in judgment, not casting blame, Miranda, but trying to harvest lessons learned. You know, a lot of people have brought up political correctness. Do you think that's, that's one of the issues that are tying the FBI agents' arms behind their back when it comes to investigating situations like this? Well, Miranda, I talked earlier about my discomfort with the Democrat side in today's debate, refusing to talk about radical jihadism and radical Islam. I, I think we've made ourselves kind of allergic to that discussion. Look, this is about Islam. It's not about all of Islam, and it's certainly not about all Muslims. But we should allow ourselves an adult conversation about what is a great crisis in one of the world's great religions. And perhaps because we have this national allergy that the president and other senior leaders won't mention this, maybe that also kind of trickles down to the rest of the population and people are reluctant to, if they see something, say something. Say something. And that, of course, is a formula for failure. General Hayden, the former director of both the NSA and the CIA, thank you so much for joining us. Again, the name of his book is Playing to the Edge, American Intelligence in the Age of Terror. Pleasure to have you.